Blog Talk Radio. Now let, let's uh, let's move forward and talk about Marcus Smart. This the suspension of Marcus Smart of the NCAA recently uh, suspended Marcus Smart for three games after shoving a fan uh, shoving a fan in the crowd um, in the opposing crowd uh, uh, on the road against Texas Tech. Uh, um, Marcus Smart uh, just lost control and. And and uh, and showed the fan. Uh, the fan actually uh, told told Marcus Smart that he was a piece of crap. You know, he didn't. He, the fan didn't cross the line, but but uh, you see, Mar- Marcus Smart just uh, you know went on an outburst, and he, and he couldn't control himself. So so yeah, I, I want to ask you, Jesus, uh, how does this affect? Uh, Marcus Smart in general, and how does this affect him uh, heading into uh, the NBA draft? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, we're not sure yet if that will have an effect on the draft. Um, he did, um, you know, he, he did apologize in a statement, um, and I, I think you just, you know, you just move forward with it. Um, he, you know, they, they both apologize. Um, the thing that um doesn't make sense to me though um it, the fan claims he said uh he called him you know a piece of crap or whatever, and then Marcus smart said uh he said a racial slur, so now it's just like both sides don't know what they're talking about, and i i i it, it's confusing to me so um but um, when you see the video, it does say um, it does show that the fan did say something to him, and I thought that was just you know unnecessary. Um, the three games, mm, I think it it could have been less. I I feel like that's more, that's like too much, um, just for the simple fact that the fan started with him, and then, but then again, you know Marcus Smart, he he shoved him. He should you know he should have. You know, brought class to himself, and you know, just walked away and ignore it. Um, so it, it, it's it's a tough situation to even you know talk about it because I'm not in his shoes, or you know, for anybody else to talk about. Um, so the best thing is you know, as you know, for Marcus Smart, the fan, and you know, everybody else who watches um, college basketball, it's just just move on from it and. Only time will tell and see how um, it affects him in the draft, which I don't think should have too much of an, an impact on him. I mean, hey, it's not worse than um, than Meta World Peace. The time Meta World Peace uh, decided to, uh, <laughs> and, you know, I, I'll never forget this moment. But he just uh, fought with uh, one of the fans in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's just crossing the line, but. <laughs> Um, right, but but yeah. Despite the suspension, though, Marcus Smart has um, been dealt with high expectations throughout this season. After deciding to return a uh, another year of, of uh, college basketball with Oklahoma State, um, um, you know, j- just to uh, defend, just to defend Marcus Smart. Um, now, I, I I would add that uh, uh, fans, including uh, cameramen, should be a foot uh, more away from from the basketball court because um, I think fans can cause controversy. I think cameramen can cause injuries. Uh, I think there needs to be more of a safer environment for the players um, to play on, on the basketball court. So. So uh, even even though even though it wasn't uh, the right decision by Marcus Smart to go on an outburst, um, the NCA or even uh, basketball in general should consider m- moving uh, cameramen, fans, whatever it is, just to step uh, away from or a foot away, I meant, from from the basketball court, so we can just see. Um, uh, an, an excellent game of basketball. Uh, that's all we want to see. We don't want to see 
uh, brawls. We don't want to see uh, <laughs> the mascots going out. We don't want to see. <laughs> we don't want to see uh, any any controversy. So, yeah, you know, right, right. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. But, um, but uh, aside from the situation, I, I just I just want to say. I'm not too high on Marcus Smart, uh, even though, even though uh, many people have him high on their on their uh, draft boards. I, I'd say uh, Marcus Smart still needs to work on shooting, especially from beyond the arc. Uh, this year, he's shooting a, a 28.1 uh, three-point shooting percentage, which is uh, which is mediocre. So he needs to work on that, and he also needs to work on. Uh, Ball handling. He needs to work on ball handling. I would say I would say he's a good he's a good uh, facil- facilitator out on the court, but he needs to work more on ball handling. Why did Allen Iverson? Why did or in fact why did undersized po- undersized point guards like Allen Iverson become successful? Why did undersized point guards like John Stockton become successful? Because John Stockton is a very good ball handler, and Allen Iverson was a great, and I, I mean great, uh, shooter. So Marcus Smart just needs to work on uh, some facets of his game in order to become um, an elite point guard in the NBA someday. So this about wraps it up for Sports Kingdom. Kingdom. I want to thank Jesus Rivera for joining the show. You can follow Jesus on Twitter at Real Jesus Rivera, and you can find me on Twitter as well at J Bravo SK. I've been your host, Julian Bravo the King. You can re-listen to this episode on iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn, Blog Talk Radio. We will be back on the air next Monday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about MLB free, free agency. So don't miss out on, on that. Uh, once again, thank you, and peace out.